bless you. I am delighted to be accompanied by these great men of God, uh, Reverend Boundary, uh, Reverend Webb, Pastor Webb, and Elder Holmes, and our own Reverend Porter. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm here just to share a portion of a word with you. I am inclined to offer the same to our hearers for the edifying of your faith in Christ. Our Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, chapter number four. Do you have your Bibles? Second Corinthians chapter 4. I want to read into your hearing verses 15, 16, 17, and 18. There is recorded for all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, down to the glory of God. For which cause we thank not. But though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. Are you with me? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, <laughs> working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah. I want to talk briefly from this thought one moment in time. One moment in time. It's crucially important today that we recognize that regardless of how chaotic things might appear to be, there is someone in control. Do I have a witness? Uh, because they call it a pandemic, it does not mean we ought to panic. Because we know who's in control. What we don't know is what is going to transpire always from day to day. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But the moral never has been promised to us. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Before we start worrying about tomorrow, we ought to find some time to thank him for today. Today is the day that he woke us up. And we are yet clothed in our right mind. Today is the day that we enjoy a reasonable portion of our health and strength. Today is the day that we acknowledge from which our help does come. Therefore, this moment in time was created uh, just for you. You are not spending worrying about tomorrow, for tomorrow may never be. But right now, we find evidence of the fact uh, that all things are given for your sake. Yeah. Yes, sir. Paul the Apostle said that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, uh, down, down to the glory of God. It's here that 
He opens this letter to the church at Corinth. And in this fourth chapter, earlier so, in the seventh verse, you'll find where he indicates that we have this treasure. I wish I had a witness. We have this treasure invested in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So whatever we are encountering today is not about you, it's about him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the one that woke us up this morning. He's the one that started us on our way. He's the one that has given us our health and strength. Therefore, Paul talks about it, this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, the Greek term for this earthen type vessel, I uh, would call it simply clay. Uh, big clay, if you will, and it refers uh, to clay pots or pottery, if you will. They were cheap, breakable, replaceable, but they served necessary household functions. I don't know about you, but I have my share of earthen vessel where I can always stash a little something, something. I wish I had a witness. Sometimes they are used also as vaults for very valuable things such as money or jewelry or even important documents have been known to be hidden in earthen vessels. Yes. But they were most often in this context used for holding, if you will, garbage or human waste. The latter is what Paul was indicating in this letter to the church. He had in mind that it was how he viewed himself. You ought not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Paul thought of himself as being lowly, being a commoner, being expendable and replaceable. And the excellency of the power uh, would be of God and not of us. By using frail, expendable people, God makes it clear that salvation is the result of his power. Somebody say his power. His power. Not any power of his messengers uh, would be able to generate the same. Great power of God overcomes and it transcends even clay pots. You remember when Jeremiah said to God, I'm not able to go. Yes, sir. But God told him to go down to the potter's house. And watch what he does with even a lump of clay. He can fashion it and he can mold it any way he wants to and he can tear it all up on the wheel and pick it up and put it all back together again. Yeah, yes, sir. Nothing but clay. Uh, the messenger's weakness uh, is not fatal to what God does, but the messenger's weakness is essential in the hands of God. It is he that has made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. It's here that we also give credence to the fact that in Paul's letter to Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number one, he says, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For 
is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And the question was raised, where is the rock wise? And where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? For well, after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, and it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yeah. Uh, yes, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But when you put your trust in Jesus, just remember that he will take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, in this demonstration of theology, uh, in verses 8 and 9, he gave four contrasting metaphors to show that his weakness did not cripple him, but it actually strengthened him. In these chapters, uh, in these verses, eight, nine, you'll find where he talks metaphorically about being troubled. He talks about being perplexed, being persecuted, and even cast down at times. I don't know about you, but if you haven't met trouble, keep on living. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Yes, yes, yes. Paul said, every time I go to do the right thing, right. evil is yeah. always present. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to look for trouble. No. Trouble will find you. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Uh, there are times when you are perplexed because it's when you have done your best uh, that oftentimes you are criticized. So Paul said we are troubled and we are oftentimes perplexed. We are persecuted. There are some folk that even though you may not be persecuted to the extent that the Christians of this day were persecuted, Folk can assassinate you even by the tongue. I wish I had a witness. Folk will take your best and think worst of it. What is he trying to prove? What is she doing here? Are you praying with me? But I stop by to remind you in short order form that God can use anybody. Anytime, anywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes we have to be cautious not to become so high-minded. Yeah. Because God has the ability not only to pick you up, but he can bring you down. Yes, Do I have a witness? Yes, so Paul used more metaphorically that these incidents and circumstances do come. Being troubled being perplexed, being persecuted, or even cast down. Yes, Paul, even through his weakness, uh, he knew that Christ was on display. His sufferings, the false apostles said, were evidence of God not being with him. You know how it was with Job when Job went through his trials, even his good friends. Said, Job, you can level with me. You must have done something wrong. That's right. Uh, but it's here that apostle said that it was evident that God was not with him according to his enemies. They labeled him as being a fraud. On the contrary, Paul affirmed that his suffering, as 
actually it was a badge of loyalty to Christ and the source of his real power. If you look closely over in Galatians, you'll find in Galatians 2 where he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I live now, uh, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He goes on to say, I don't frustrate the grace of God. In other words, whatever God takes you to, you will also bring you through it. I don't frustrate the grace of God. Uh, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ would be dead and vain. Therefore, Paul affirmed uh, that his suffering was a badge of loyalty. It was good for him to be able to know that God was still in control. Yes, we find in a very noted scripture, we find that uh, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. Do I have a witness in the house? Not only is my grace sufficient, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes. Yes. Therefore, I take pleasure, good God from time, mm -hmm. in my infirmities and in my weaknesses, in necessities and in persecution and even in distress for Christ's sake. For he had the testimony. When I'm weak, just know that he's strong. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes, One must never forget that if you live for Jesus, you die with him. Yes, sir. I wish I had a witness in the house. Yes, An old church used to say, I died one time. I don't have to die anymore. Yes, I died when Christ died. I died when he was crucified. I was crucified with him. Therefore, Paul talks about these circumstances wherein we are challenged. We're troubled, he said. We're troubled on every side. I wish I had a witness. But one must recognize that we're not in distress. We are Perplexed. I don't know, have you ever been perplexed? Sometimes I have sleepless nights wondering what tomorrow's going to bring. Maybe perplexed, but know that I'm not in despair. Sometimes persecuted, Paul say, but I'm not forsaken. I may be cast down, but no, 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 I will not be destroyed. Because I'm always buried about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus may be made manifest even in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore I've spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up by Jesus and shall present us even with you. 
I wish I had a witness here. All things are for your sake, he says, uh, that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of many down to the glory of God. Let me cut to the chase. He's been good to us. Do I have a witness? One once, a psalmist said that if I had 10,000 tongues, I just couldn't thank him enough. You ought to spend time counting your blessings. Just see what the Lord has done. Know that what he has done, he can do. I don't have to worry about my enemies because God said that he'll make them my footstool. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat for tomorrow. Because he said he'll set a table before me. Do I have a witness? I don't have to get frustrated over what somebody else has. Because he said what's mine belongs to me. Do I have a witness? He said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, and everything else you need, he'll just supply it for you. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. We are clay vessels. Uh, that the glory of God might be manifested even in our lives. If it were not for the Lord that was on our side, I don't know where we would be right about now. Uh, there have been epidemics that have scared most of us. Epidemics is something that is taking place on a local level. Um, but when you start talking about a pandemic, you're talking about God is talking to somebody at every level of existence. He's talking on the local level, he's talking on the personal level, he's talking on the individual, and he's talking at every stage of government. I had a conversation just a day or so ago with one of our preachers, and we laughed about it. He said to me, Pastor, you know, I've never seen anything like this. It's really bad out here, and you know, uh, the whole world seemed to be affected by it. And I've never seen nothing like it. And I said to him, Preacher, I've never seen anything like it either, but I'll tell you what I've been taught. He said, what you been taught, preacher? He said, I, you know, sometimes I have a song. I said, God always gives us a song. He said, sometimes I walk around and I'm singing, we're climbing Jacob's ladder. I said, yeah, but sometimes I walk around and I sing, he has the whole world in his hand. Before you start complaining about what isn't, you ought to thank God for what he is. I don't mean any harm, but uh, Paul said, uh, for which cause we think not, though our outward man perish. You know, this old outward man, this mortal man, he keep getting up and laying down and getting up. You'll find out that he's going to get a little dusty after a while. Yeah. Yeah. And this old mortal man uh, may perish, but God is so good until he works not from the outside in, but from the inside out. Yeah. Uh, while you might think I'm perishing without, he said on the inside, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my inward man is being renewed. Day by day. Therefore, we are called upon to understand that this type of transition doesn't make us weaker, it makes us stronger. Yes. Because every trial you have and endure serves to make you strong. Yes. I don't know how many crises you've been in in your lifetime, yeah. but it's evident that however many that you experience, the good thing is, is that you're still here. Yeah. Can I get a witness? And with every process, there's an equivalent seed of a testimony. 
you ought to be willing to share with somebody. I had some hard times. Yeah. But I found out that my God was stronger than my hard times. Yeah. I had some times when my friends didn't understand me. Others wanted to disown me and walk away from me. But when I, I was all alone, uh, I found out that he was a friend. Yes. Stick closer than a brother. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness? Yes, For this cause, I think not. Um, but though our outward man shall ultimately perish, I get excited uh, uh, for what the future might hold. This is just one moment in time. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes, Therefore, the apostle said, uh, for our life affliction, yes, uh, which is but for a moment, yes. is truly going to work for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. While some are busy looking at the things which are seen, uh, we are busy looking at the things which are not seen yet. Faith is the substance yes, yes. of things hoped for. Yes, it's also the evidence of things that we cannot see. Yes, and so while some are shaking because of what they see, we rejoice for that which we cannot see. Yes, for the things which we can see are temporal. But the things that we can't see, those things are eternal. Yes, sir. What I'm glad about is that this one moment that tries our faith is not worthy to be compared with the moment that we would spend in paradise. Do I have a witness? I remember the old school church talked about one day in paradise. We'll pay for everything. Do I have a witness? Every time I thought I was being counted out, God would count me in again. Every time I thought that I was at my wit's end, some kind of way God would keep on fanning the fire. And it keep on burning in the spirit. Yes, yes, Are you praying with me here? Yes, I don't mean any harm, but somebody need to give God some glory. Yes. Because God has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes. That's how come repeatedly we encourage you uh, to make a joy for noise. Yes. Unto the Lord, all ye lands. Are you going to pray with me? You're going to serve me? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Every now and then you ought to think about it and know that the Lord, he is God. Can I get a witness? It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Do I have a witness in the house? Here's a number that I love to tag myself with. I don't know what ranking number I have with God. But John said I saw a number that no man could number. Do I have a witness? John said these that have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Is that all right? I don't know the number, but somewhere in that number, I know that one day in paradise is going to pay for it all. Do I have a minute? I got to stand here and tell somebody now, uh, but he promised uh, to put me back together again. Uh, is that all right? Uh, what I'm glad about uh, is that he created us. Uh, 
Yeah. This joy that I have. 